can you develop a whole school art project? At Lauriston School in the East End of London, art is seen as a core subject and the theme they have chosen for their whole school project is portraits. Teachers have worked together to design a range of activities that will suit each year group and support the aims of the national curriculum. While some teachers have focused on drawing and observational skills, others have looked at portraits more abstractly, using a wide range of different tools and materials. The whole project has been organised by Deputy Head and Art Coordinator Peter Sanders. We're all doing different things. Here in my classroom, I'm concentrating on drawing. And this is a year two class who have done very little um, drawing where they've had to concentrate and look and be really focused. In programme one, we saw Peter's class drawing self-portraits and learning about line, tone and observation. Drawing is an essential part of the artwork that goes on in our primary school. Keep looking at the marks you've made. Are they squiggly? Are you using tone? They drew for about an hour, which I think is extraordinary, especially considering that they're only three weeks into being year two children. What have you learned that's made you a better drawer, do you think? I looked at the light bits, then I looked at the dark bits. Don't rush, really look closely. I want you to go up and to tell us why you like... As art coordinator, Peter has worked with colleagues to develop the portrait theme with other year groups. The nursery chose to do face painting. This was seen by everybody as a fun way of addressing the theme of self-portrait. And what I want you to do is just make some shape. We've done quite a lot of work on portraits before, but we found that with children that small, it's quite hard to get them to really look at faces. They tend to be quite focused on the paper and what they're producing. Make long, fat lines. Try pressing So we decided the best way was to actually get them to paint each other, because then it would be kind of a very direct experience of what a face is like. About what colours you're going to choose. We started off by taking digital photos, but we printed them out in black and white because we didn't want them to be distracted by the colours that were already on the face. You can do it on your lips, guys. You can, I'm going to give you... And we talked about patterns and colour and different things they might like to do. And when they'd had a bit of an experiment with that, we moved on to the actual face paints. Why do you think we're colouring in these faces, Martha? So we know what we want to do on the faces and we want to do on the faces look very nice on the faces. That's right. We got them to kind of just practice with the sponges and the brushes on my hand so that they could have a feel of what the materials were like and then pretty much let them have a free reign on the faces. I think it's really important to approach a topic like portraits in quite a variety of ways because some children will be really inspired by painting or drawing and for others something more hands-on like clay or face painting is what will work for them. Is that what you were trying to make him look like? No. Oh, no. I think whole school projects work really well because you know, the children talk amongst themselves and with siblings and I think it, it creates quite a nice community feel when we're all working on one thing together. Reception class are making puppets and using collage to experiment with different materials. We'll be looking at our design and thinking, how can we make this into a puppet? We decided to break the portrait project down into smaller stages rather than doing everything at once. So we broke down looking at ourselves and asking a lot of questions, asking the children things like, what do they look like? What, what colour are their eyes? Uh, talking about our skin tones. Uh, the different colours of all the children in the classroom. Else? We decided to see if we could work with the children to mix their skin colour, which actually was really tricky. What do you think? A bit more red. In it. They're all trying to mix their skin colour to cover on their bags, and they've all worked out that you use red, blue or yellow, and then they're testing it on bits of paper to see whether it's, they like it. Test it on this again, to see if you like that. Eventually we came out with some really lovely ranges of skin colour. And then the next stage was to look again at our faces and decide how we're going to make our face look like us. So you might want to choose a I material that hair. looks just like your hair. We limited the materials that we gave them because if you put feathers and sparkly things out, even though we've had a conversation about their eye colour, they'll still choose the silver bits to stick on their eyes. 
because they're drawn to the exciting things. Can you see any other green on the table that you might want to use? And then it's just a question of having a look at what they've got and saying, OK, well, you've chosen blue for your eyes, that's great. What else do we need to put on your face to make it look more like you? I think they look quite good. The eyelashes are fantastic because that shows me that you've been looking really closely. Put your puppet on your hand, Kitty, and then we can tell a story with your puppet. You have to turn it round, don't you? Yeah, you do. Year one are doing colour mixing, which helps them to develop skills of blending and matching, as well as observation. And we saw how they could all mix together to make different colours. We selected the primary colours to give them more of a chance at producing an actual colour that wasn't just brown. We had a trial lesson to see what they could produce, and they were managing really, really well. What colour is it made, Jonah? Purple. And we're going to try and make eye colour, skin colour. With our project on portraits, rather than thinking about the whole face in one go, which is quite daunting for a child and also quite difficult to do for anybody, we thought we'd go ahead with focusing them on hair, eye, lip and cheek colour. And I think we've got some really successful results. You can see, that's almost exactly the same colour as your skin, isn't it? What did you use? Blue. Wait. A bit of red. So it just blue and red? Right, Adam, we're just going to hold this up against your face if it looks like your lips. Well, I basically think colour mixing is magical because they come up results that they totally didn't think they were going to have. And one little boy was saying, I can't make pink. And I said, what colour is you using? And he said, blue and white. So they're really surprised with what happens with colour, really, even at this age. I can see some similar colours in there. See so if you can try to do... also got a bit of, like, ginger. A little bit reddish, isn't it? A little bit gingery. That looks like somebody's eye colour, maybe. Is it matching up yet? Uh, no. I think you're getting closer, though. We use clay on a regular basis throughout the school. Put your bits of clay on the board Here, the Year 3 are using it to take the theme of portraits into three dimensions. I knew they'd had a lot of experience working with clay, so we thought it would be a really nice material to use just to develop their skills a bit further. What happens to the clay if your hands are really warm? It really helped me that I had my assistant on hand to cut the clay to prepare it, because if you do it too long in advance, it dries out and it's useless. So preparation is essential, really. You've got the basic shape of your face ready. Can anybody remind me what are the techniques we can use to add bits onto the clay? We talked a lot as a school about the things that we might need to do and um, so people who are very experienced with clay were saying, well, you need to think about the layout of the class to make sure each child had their own space. Caitlin, what um, else? We can use our tools to smooth bits on. Have a think about the drawings you did the other day. We spent quite a long time drawing, looking at people from different angles, different viewpoints, so they could really piece together where things fit in. And even after the drawing came in, there was a lot of time just feeling the clay. So you're going to put sausages to go down the back of your head yeah. as well. And put it on here so it could be the front of my head. Wonderful. Oh, so did you make holes first? And then you put the balls inside. With this stick, I'm making eyelashes. I think clay was fantastic to use because, especially in Key Stage 1, art is very much 2D and it's about work with paper. And I found the children that are very reluctant to make marks on paper were actually quite happy to use clay. If they made a mistake, they could squish it back in. And certainly by doing it myself on a whole class scale, I'd now feel more confident to try that kind of thing again. It's nice, squidging all the clay. The idea came from some literacy work that they'd done where they'd invented some characters and they were encouraged to be as imaginative and as venturous as they could. I just wanted the hair to look like a punk. How did you get this paper to curl? Because you've got the curls in your drawing, then you've got it on your mask as well. Oh, so the mask making is really putting sort of life into the character, the idea being that they will then wear the masks and become the characters that they've created. Why have you chosen those colours? What kind of animals are you thinking about? Dinosaurs are the green ones, mm -hmm. and the yellow ones are kind of like goldfish. In terms of the actual making itself, the aim was to get the children to explore different ways of using very simple materials, such as card and paper, and experiment with different ways of folding, cutting and sticking. Then we covered it with the head with gum strip. I think it's good for the children to see what other children are doing and how portrait isn't just about drawing a face. It's about representing people in lots of different ways. It sounds like it's got its mother of its ears. 
100%. This tongue is meant to be like an electrical tongue, so I called it cyber tongue. The eventual outcome will be that they'll wear the masks and that will be another starting point for drama work. Year five have been looking at the way different artists have approached portraits. Picasso was the starting point for the folded card faces. Time to fold paper and see if we could get a 3D effect, just like Picasso was doing. I thought it would be really nice for the children to have to think about portraits in three dimension. We want to now start looking at our profile, the side. It of very our quickly face. occurred to me that the children were going to struggle to get 3D portraits of themselves with the cutting, the scoring of cards, the folding, the bending. And so it kind of developed that they did characters that came out from close observational drawing, bits and pieces of different characters. It kind of took on a life of its own, and so they're characters with beards and that kind of thing. It's a bit hard because your face is there and your eyes are on your face, so you can't really see yourself. I've got his ear, there, his ear there. He used the scissors, pulled it, and then it made this curly thing for, for frizzy hair. I wanted it to be a link to as many subjects as possible. The children are going to hopefully have this portrait that opens up and then it, lots of characters can develop from it, including their own. And it's going to be a fantastic route to creative writing. It's a drawing of the side of Femi's hair. Using photographs and photocopies, Year 6 are exploring the meaning of images by looking at the context in which they appear. I presented them with the idea of portraits. Simultaneously, it so happened that they were gripped by the topic and history of the Second World War. Thus, we had two strands, the Second World War, or developing an abstract, more personal theme. Is that you're questioning the meaning of photographs by superimposing your own photograph? I got a picture of my dad in his suit and a picture of a Victorian man. Then I made sort of ghosted images of the man and him. I've taken this year six class up from year five, so I know well their strengths and weaknesses. And they're particularly good at responding to somewhat open-ended projects. What is the point of being able to see into the box? I had an idea um, of like just to put something in the middle of it. I feel strongly that whilst I present the children with a theme, they need to have the freedom to take that theme in the direction of their choice and uh, arriving at conclusions where they're actually, one could say, deconstructing the whole meaning of photographs. So they would become with funny hairstyles and ballerinas playing football. Could you tell us what the picture shows? This has been a really enjoyable project. It has also met many of the aims and objectives of the national curriculum. For example, it's developed skills, creativity and self-awareness. Children and staff have had the chance to share the work that they've done on a common theme and seen the progression across the age range. Although the project is nearing completion, it will serve as a tool to be used in drama, language and discussion work for many weeks to come. And can you sum up for us just uh, what is the overall meaning of your piece of work? Mm. Weird. <laughs>